Researchers at Princeton University have discovered a novel trait in a virus, and after some experimentation, they just might have turned it into a revolutionary tool for treating bacterial infections. Okay, so first, a little background information. Bacteria are known to communicate with each other through a process called quorum sensing. The bacteria release signal molecules that are used to send messages to other bacteria. Depending on the particular signaling molecule, the information that's being relayed could mean that the host is healthy, or that the host is sick and has a compromised immune system. Other signals can announce the discovery of food, or that there are other hosts nearby. This quorum sensing allows all the bacteria in a habitat, like inside the body of a host, for example, to communicate and coordinate their behavior. Viruses can do something similar. Now, viruses don't have quorum sensing, per se, but they do have the capacity to opportunistically infect their host, so as to optimize the success of their infection and to improve their chance of spreading. I'll let the scientists who were involved in the discovery explain this a little bit better. Molecular biologist Bonnie Bassler said that viruses can only make one decision. They can stay dormant and hidden in the host, or they can turn on their infectious capabilities and kill their host. This choice to turn on the infection and kill the host can be risky for the virus. Professor Bassler said, quote, If there are no other hosts nearby, then the virus and all its kin just died. Unquote. All right, so now that I've established that background information, let's move on to the discovery itself. Professor Bassler's graduate student, Justin Silp, or Justin Silpe, I'm not sure how you pronounce his last name, discovered that a virus called VP882 has evolved a way to gather intel on its host, so that it can make an informed decision and infect its host without the risk. Professor Bassler described the virus's trait as, quote, brilliant and insidious, unquote. It turns out that the VP882 virus can detect and respond to the signaling molecules that bacteria use in their quorum sensing. The virus is too simple to have extensive sensory abilities, so it eavesdrops on the bacteria, who are larger and more complex, and who do have the capacity to sense their environment to a greater degree. Specifically, in the case of this VP882 virus, the bacteria can sense when their host is surrounded by other members of its species. To the bacteria, these are all new potential hosts, so they communicate and coordinate with each other to ramp up their infection all at once, so that they have the best chances of spreading to new hosts. This is all about timing. Now, the virus has the same general strategy. So when it senses this particular bacterial crosstalk, when it overhears these bacteria talking and saying, hey, it's crowded outside, maybe we should ramp up the infection and try to spread, the virus will take the hint and activate its own infectious capacity. It'll produce copies of itself. These will burst out of cells and spread through the body's fluids, and from there it can infect new hosts. This ability for the virus to eavesdrop on bacteria is a totally novel trait, and Mr. Silpe realized almost instantly the potential medical application. Professor Bessler said, quote, Justin found this naturally occurring case, and then he re-engineered that virus so that he can provide any sensory input he chooses, rather than the communication molecule. And then the virus kills on demand, unquote. Essentially, the VP882 virus can be altered so that it senses different molecules which cause it to target different types of cells. Mr. Silpe has already tested this process to get the VP882 virus to infect cholera, salmonella, and E. coli bacterial cells. Other scientists have commented on the findings, and there seems to be real excitement about this discovery. People are saying that it could be developed into an antibacterial treatment that has the capacity for hyperspecific targeting. Graham Hatful is a professor of biotechnology at the University of Pittsburgh, and he wasn't involved in the research, but he did offer his opinion. He said that this technique could even be a promising way to treat drug-resistant bacteria. If this is true, and it can be developed to do this, then this viral technology could save countless lives by, at least temporarily, 
averting the looming crisis of an epidemic caused by drug-resistant bacteria. The medical potential here is really incredible, and if the technology is sufficiently developed, it could realistically be described as world-saving. When it comes to the so-called superbacteria that threaten to return us to a time before antibiotics, this description of world-saving really isn't hyperbole. It would be kind of wild if it really did end up being a world-saving medical technology, because at first, few people thought that Mr. Silpe's research would go anywhere. Professor Bassler said, quote, He was gung-ho, and I thought, what the heck, give this kid a little rope. If this isn't working soon, we can always move on. His was a crazy idea, because there's never, ever been evidence of a virus listening in on bacterial host information to decide whether to stay put or kill, unquote. Basically, Mr. Silpe was working on a hunch, and he ended up making a chance discovery that could potentially be developed into a revolutionary medical technology that could one day save millions of lives. Like, that's incredible. What are the chances? How awesome and how lucky is this? Professor Bassler also said, quote, Of course, that's the beauty of science, and science at Princeton, that you have enough resources to play those hunches out and see if there's a there there. And this time, there was a big there there. Unquote. 